Hello, welcome to Dish Talk. I'm your host, Dan Donahue. First off, I want to quickly thank everybody for watching the videos. It's been really nice that people have been responding well to them. Uh, it warms my brutal, L.A. shriveled heart that uh, so many people care to watch and comment and like and please subscribe. Uh, I had a topic that I wanted to cover today, and that topic is PDA, Public Displays of Affection. The reason I want to talk about it is I heard from a friend something that I have heard echoed from other people. I heard from a friend that he doesn't like PDA. I've heard from a few people that their pet peeve is PDA. They don't like it, public displays of affection. There's a lot of people who have a pet peeve, and that pet peeve is public displays of affection. Some people just don't like when other people kiss in front of them. Or, to a lot of people, it's worse. A lot of people aren't concerned with kissing. A lot of people are more like, you can kiss in front of me, but don't, you know, feel each other up in line for the Costco. They go, you can kiss in front of me, just don't play footsies at the divorce attorney's office. I am here to get a divorce. I don't know why you two are here playing footsies. It seems like you two have a decent relationship. Now, please, you are making me cry. A lot of people don't like that kind of PDA. Now, under your, I understand the aversion to PDA. People are thinking, oh, you should do that in private. It's inappropriate in public. There's a level that's maybe inappropriate. There's a level that's maybe inappropriate. In certain public settings, there is a level to which PDA might be a little bit too much if you are doing too much. You know, you shouldn't be doing a whole, you shouldn't be doing this and this and this and this in line at CVS. Do you understand? That's maybe a little bit too much. But I am very lenient. I am very, in fact, for me, if you're doing that in the line at CVS, I'm fine with it. I don't mind. And it's not that I'm trying to join in or anything. I just think that PDA is sort of an example of, of two people being at least in that moment happy. Do you know how rare that is? Do you know how rare it is? I re really think about this. Now there are people out there living beautiful, fulfilled lives. They have careers that they love, or they have families that they love, or they have both. They have uh, artistic endeavors. I feel like I'm a pretty happy person. I have pretty high highs and low lows that I really, really appreciate. But when I walk through the world and when I hear people who write in to the podcast and all that stuff, I really do get the sense that very few of us have moments, I'm not talking about elation, I'm not talking about being at the top of the mountain of happiness, but just a moment of human contact and comfort. I, you're going to be mad at two people for expressing love for each other. Do you know how bleak this world is? Do you know how rare it is you get to feel good? And the fact that they have chosen this line at Costco's to do it is, you know, is it ideal? No, but at least they're doing it. At least you are looking at an example of someone being comfortable. Because listen, that relationship... It's not all peaches and cream, okay? That is not a perfect relationship that you are watching. In fact, heavy PDA relationships tend to be some of the most volatile relationships. Let those people have a nice six months together. Let that PDA relationship happen because it's probably only going to last six months. And then they're going to have the worst two years they've ever had. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Okay? And do you think they care when you roll your eyes at them and tap your foot at them? No. No. They have, they have their feet in each other's mouths and they're about to get ice cream. Nothing you can do can make that couple feel bad. Okay? But, uh... I do think, and I also think, you know, a little bit of PDA, even to me. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not the guy, I'm not the guy who's, uh, who's, you know, groping in a public setting. Okay, I'm not groping in a public setting, but I, I have grown to learn 
That little bit of PDA is nice. And let show the world that you care about that person. Why not? Do we live in such a harsh environment where you leave work and you see two people kissing and you're like, I'm going to go to HR about this. There is no HR in the real world. Out in the open. Okay? The only HR is the police. And they don't come when two people are kissing each other. They come when a rich person's property is in jeopardy. And that is about it. But I think it's nice. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a robot, to be honest with you. Or, or at least I was. I, I didn't... I didn't date or have a relationship until later on in life. And I kind of had to slowly learn how to, like, be, how to present in public with a partner. And that's a hard lesson to learn because there's no rule book on it, right? That's another thing. You see a lot of PDA from young people. And the reason why is, A, you know, they're filled with enough hormones to uh, create a national champion Olympic wrestling team. And B, they, they just don't know how to act yet, you know, in a real way. They, like, they just feel something and they do it. And there's something pure about that. You know what I mean? There's something pure about, like, you know, giving, giving someone butterfly kisses at AAM, you know, while you have a backpack on. <laughs> but I, I didn't... I didn't learn those lessons, and I think that what happened, and I think this happens with a lot of people that date late in life, um, you kind of feel like you missed a learning curve when it comes to, uh, when it comes to kind of the rules of engagement in a relationship, but the good news about that, and if you are a person like that, because I know that that's becoming more and more of a problem in society as time goes on, uh, just know that the space that you have between yourself and learning those lessons can be a good thing. If you learn things later in life, it is unfortunate. I had to learn things way later in life when it came to relationships. It is unfortunate because, you know, you don't get that quality time to learn and understand how to be and how to act. And, you know, you're 23 years old and you've realized that you've never really gone on a date, Right. That's where I was, and that's not a great place to be. But the thing is, when you do start dating, you you have this adult perspective that really does help. Like, I think a lot of people develop a lot of their bad habits when they're young and dating, too. Like, you know, it, it's insane to me, in fact, that some people start dating as young as they do. Uh, not insane in that it shouldn't happen or that it's a bad thing or anything, but insane that... That's when we're learning how to be treated. That's when we're learning what our partners should be, how they should act to us, what boundaries we should set. And I think a lot of people get a lot of bad habits from very, very young, volatile relationships. And as like a late bloomer, I do find that I had a bit of a leg up when it came to considerations. I think I miss a lot of big red flags. I think as an adult... I missed a lot of huge red flags, uh, or I'm sorry, I, when I say I missed them, I mean, I mean, I missed them like a skier misses those flags that they ski in between. That was me. It's not to say I didn't date, uh, I, I was about to say, but it's not to say I didn't date mistakes. I've dated mistakes before, okay? And by the way, I was a mistake to them. We were both mutually, that's a beautiful kind of relationship, by the way. Sometimes you break up with somebody and it was clear that they were a mistake for you today. And sometimes you break up with somebody and it's clear that you were a mistake for them today. I've had a lot of those. I've had a lot of, when I was like younger, relationships with women who had stuff going for them and they were slumming it with me. And afterwards I was like, miss, what were you thinking? <laughs> but, uh... But that's a, that's a beautiful thing when you, when you both are mutually like, man, that was neither of us benefited from that exchange. <laughs> but uh, I think I was able to avoid a lot of big mistakes because when I really started dating, I was a little bit older. And when you're a little bit older, you understand just a couple. You don't understand a lot because it wasn't like I was, you know, 30. But when you're 22, you at least understand, oh, okay. All right, that, see that, that woman who's trying to hit pigeons with a slingshot, that might not be your soulmate. 
there's a good uh, reevaluate her. That, and for women, it's like, oh, that, you know, oh, that that uh, that guy who expresses uh, no emotion but violence, that might he might not be great around your future kids. That might not be the one. We might want to keep we might want to keep spinning that wheel. Spit in that old, beautiful relationship wheel and see who else comes up. Maybe, oh, it's another guy with anger problems? Oh, no. Okay, well, I guess that, that just kind of happens a lot with the, uh, with the, <laughs> the dating wheel if you are a heterosexual woman. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess I say that to say this. When it, when it comes to uh, judging other people who are in relationships that, you know, we're looking, it's very easy to roll your eyes at people. I, I do all the time, you know, I, I'll be honest, like when I see two, you know, people who are together and they're both in Stewie Griffin sweatpants and they're both putting their hands down the back of each other's pants, I'll have the brief thought like, oh, that's trashy. That's a trap. Look at them. Like, blah, blah. But then you, you just have to like, take a moment and realize you're the, I'm being the asshole in that situation because I'm looking at two people who are at least on the surface happy with each other and I'm alone and like, what am I doing? You, if you're bitter at other people's happiness, untraining that bitterness also trains you to be happy because I think there is this natural avert, like, if you see someone who's happy and your instinct for like towards that is bitterness, eventually that's going to make an imprint on your brain, I feel, where you're going to start being bitter about your own happy. You're going to think, oh, well, I can't, I can't, you know, show affection to somebody in public, then I'm trashy. And then you're going to have a lot of good times just pass you by. So when it comes to PDA, be delicate, right? Be gentle with your assessments, but... If you see a guy take a woman's shirt off at the water park, well, I guess taking your shirt off at the water park is kind of normal. If you got, see a guy take a woman's shirt off at Disneyland, maybe then we call the authorities. Uh, I guess that's the, that's the talk today. I really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. Uh, I also, I have a links in my bio that or in the description of this that go to my stand updates and my other social media platforms. So check that out if you want. If not, I'm glad you came here and thank you for watching. As always, have a good one.